Good morning and welcome to this month's vlog which is slightly related to a recent vlog that you've seen on the Avid channel about my capture of butter at £64. Now if you've watched that vlog you'll have seen me talk about doing some Instagram stories leading up to the capture of that fish which were on the Avid channel. Now I recognise that not everybody's on Instagram so some of you probably haven't seen those stories. So what I thought would be nice to do now is show those stories in sequence and also some extended headcount for you that I managed to gather during the fight of the fish because the Avid video only showed about a minute or so whereas there's a lot more footage to show about that and what that video didn't talk about is that when I hooked into the fish and when I landed it it was actually four swims down which is some distance on a 70 acre lake so let's take a look at that footage now and I hope you enjoy watching it. Good evening and welcome to another one of the Avid Carp Instagram takeovers with myself Simon Crow. and today you join me up north in Nottinghamshire where I'm fishing the very special Girton Main Lake which is about 70 acres in size and in this water you've got two very special fish the biggest of which weighs around about 61, 62 pounds and that one, I hate this name, it goes by the name of Butthead but there's also another really nice fish in here which I'm trying to catch which goes by the name of Tutu which is much more friendly in name and that particular fish weighs about 52, 53 pounds but both of them are absolute gems, they really are really nice looking fish and thus far this season neither of them have been caught so that's the reason why I'm down here and over the next 24 hours what we're going to be doing is talking about my fishing on this lake talking about what I'm doing during this session and also talking a little bit about what I've been up to during the course of the last few weeks so uh, let's get stuck into things the last time I did one of these takeovers you might remember that I was also on Girton and on that occasion I was in Peg 7 which is known for being a bit more of a productive area whereas this swim it's a lot slower it's got form for doing all three of the big ones and to give you an idea over the last couple of weeks that I know of it's only done two bites one of which was a 41 pound common and the other one was a 46 pound mirror both of which were the only fish that those guys caught as well so I don't know of any other fish that's been caught from here. There could have been the odd small one here and there because, you know, there's a lot of fish in Girton. But obviously with this kind of swim, you need a certain type of mindset. And that's the big fish mindset, which we'll talk about at some stage during this, this little vlog or um, takeover, whatever you want to call it. But for now, what I'm going to do is just take a look at the swim, talk you through where I've put my rods and give you an idea about what I'm doing. So there's a look at the swim. Apologies if the sound's all muffled at the moment, but it is windy. It is dying down as the sun goes down, but uh, there's not a great deal to tell you about really out here because there's not too many features. It drops down from the margins quite quickly to about 30 odd foot. Now, there is a shelf and the fish do patrol along that shelf. And obviously you've got to find the depth that they're patrolling that because as you can see down here, it's very, very clear this water is and it's been quite sunny today so the margins are very warm and there are carp in margins in other areas of the lake but in this swim I'm trying to find where that biggin is so I've got one at the bottom of the shelf and then the other two just staggered from about 12 wraps out up to about seven wraps is the closest in I'm not fishing too far out I've not got a great deal of bait out there either but uh, yeah the biggin when it does get caught from this swim it doesn't come too far out so I'm hoping I'm in the right area so there's the rods. Now let me see if I can zoom in now and I'll show you the lines. There you go. The furthest out rod is the one in the middle and the closest in one is the one to the left. Now I'm tight lining at the moment. Something I always like to do on big lakes like this because there's an undertow on here and as you can see, it's pretty windy. So with slack line, that's gonna be causing all sorts of problems with indication. And I wanna know when I've got a fish on the end rather than getting false bleeps all night. So that's the reason why I'm tight lining and also there is a shelf just about a rod length off those rod tips where as the line goes over the top of it I'm fairly sure that the majority of the line is going to be on the deck anyway so it's out of harm's way so that's the reason why I'm tight lining but yeah it looks lovely this evening said yesterday that the rods are wonky and uh, there they are you probably couldn't see it so clear yesterday but look at that for a setup there's a few you tackle sorts out there that'll be cringing at that one I actually look at it myself and I'm thinking hmm god but the, the ground's so hard out there at the moment that it's uh, so hard to get them into the ground so it's just gonna have to stay like it for now 
But yeah, woke this morning and nothing to report. No bleeps, no nothing, very quiet. So, uh, you know, I did expect that. Bite time tends to be during the day on this venue, so maybe something will happen today, but I've got to wheel in in a moment and walk the dog around the lake. I always give it to about half nine in the morning. Tend to sort of think the best bite time in here is, is first light, but there's always a chance during the day. So I'm just gonna reel them in in a minute and have a quick walk around the lake and see what's what. Just done my early morning walk around the lake to exercise the dog and had a chat to one or two of the lads. It's not overly busy, didn't talk to everybody, but there's been a few fish caught, usual 20s club. Still no sign of the two big ones. And normally two has been caught by mid-May, so that one is definitely due. Big one, well, it can be around about now through to mid-June when they generally start to spawn. And that fish is a right bugger, it really is. It's, it's one of these fish that it can get caught randomly all over the lake. One time over a load of bait, next time on a single up bait. It's got hardly any pattern to it, really. It's not like one area of the lake that it'll get caught from. It's uh, a real funny fish, and it does make sporadic appearances as well. It'll go missing for a few months and then suddenly make an appearance at a decent weight. So, uh, yeah, sitting and waiting, but it definitely looks good out there. The conditions are absolutely fantastic. I've had to put the old jacket on because the wind's blowing right for Bivy at the moment, and it's really cold, so uh, I'm a proper southern softy at the moment but uh, what i want to do now is just talk briefly about the big fish mindset because what i'm doing today is really about targeting the biggest fish that's in this lake i'm not fishing for bites now you've got to remember guys i fish a lot more than you guys so i've got more time available to me so to go and catch 20 pounders isn't something that i'm that interested in nowadays on a lake that's got a 60 pounder in if there's a 20 pounder was the biggest fish in the lake then yeah i'd be definitely interested in it but for for this particular venue the biggest one is a 60 pounder and that carp lives a completely different life to the rest of the stock fish that's in here. Now, if you just had one day a week to go fishing, I can totally understand why you want to go and get a few bites under your belt. But for me, I don't I want to try and target that fish. And to do that, you need to know a little bit more about the fish and how it lives its life. So that's what we're going to talk about now. I said earlier on about the beginning here being a very sporadic fish and then it gets caught all over the place and it does. But the reason I'm fishing in this swim is it's been caught from here. It's also consistently been caught from the swims either side or very close by. And the number two fish is also comes from this area. So that's the main reason why I'm in here. But the other thing I like about this area is it's got no holding features. It's got nothing like a no fishing bank or some weed and snags like the other areas of the lake have, which will hold those shoal fish because there's a lot of 20 pounds in here that are flooded in from the, from the River Trent and the nearby Cove Lake. And those kind of fish, they tend to stick together. Of course, they can come into this room and move through and you get a few bites quite quickly from the smaller ones. But the one thing I do like about it more than anything is it's got that deep water, which big fish, if they want to escape those shoal fish, it's that kind of area where they'll head to and they can just live a nice free life away from that shoal pack. So that's the main reason why I'm in here. To fish a swim like this consistently, you obviously need a completely different frame of mind to fishing elsewhere on the lake because very often I'm getting up in the morning and seeing the guys on the opposite bank playing fish and taking photographs, which it doesn't matter how experienced you are as a carp angler, it's still going to put those negative thoughts in your mind about am I doing the right thing? Am I using the right bait, the right rig, etc. Talk to my missus and she'll tell you that most days when I talk to her in the morning, all I'm doing is moaning to her about the blank periods that I'm enduring. But the point I'm getting at here, guys, is that big fish hunting, isn't something that happens overnight it's not easy catching big fish consistently of course there's times when you just arrive to a venue cast out you drop lucky you get the big one but if you want to catch them consistently from lots of different waters then you're going to come across these periods when you've got to endure those blank periods and just keep following it through having that tunnel vision to know what you're after and trying to achieve it they call it the waiting game waiting and wondering probably add another W in there if you're a younger carp angler like Greg Ellis. For someone like me, those days are long gone. Somewhere out there though, are two big fish that are waiting to get caught and it's perfect conditions. It's the right time of the year, a nice southwesterly blown across the lake and I've got myself three lottery tickets, so I'm just hoping it's my turn next. Take a big fish with at the moment. The old wind swung around and a bit of driving rain. Very low pressure, it's, it feels quite close like the storm's next way, but uh, still.
still the big fish with main side and nothing is happening on the rods and I'm locked in the dilly so yeah still enjoying it though and that's what matters. I don't want to tempt fate or anything, but I think I'm latched to a really big fish at the minute. This one feels a little bit different to all the other ones. It's going right round to the left. A few snags over there as well, so I've got to be careful with it. Might have to wade down the margin, I think, in a minute. to be chest in water, net under my arms, after see if I can wade under here. I don't know what it's like, see if I can get this wood under here. I think I can. Water's gone over the chesties. I used to know out of the way of that tree. God, what a fight. This is still going. fishing down there. There you go. There will be. I'm gonna have to wade down there now. Oh, I can't stop it at all. God, I don't even know where the fish is. Three swims down at the moment. Oh, it's still going. He wants to go that way, look at it. God. I cannot do anything with it.
hardly gain any line on it at all at the moment. Let's turn the camera off for a sec. What a crazy fire. Killing. I've only got size six or can I changed them yesterday from a size four to a six. Uh, kind of wishing I hadn't done that now. Going again. Good God. Not again. I'm going to go back down, down on the left again now. See if I can get a bit, a bit of line on it. Now down in pig 10, so <laughs> and it's still going. So this is either foul or it's a big fish because it's just going stupid. That's coming in real easy. Bizarre. Taking me about five swims down the lake at the moment. It's got to be a big fish, this has. My arm is aching like anything.
Oh, scrap. One of the lads who caught the number three fish the other day, so he told me that that fish took him about four swims down. Going again. There are some torpedoes in here though, so you never know. one of them, uh, definitely. That's a good fish. And then the old heart starts shaking there. Because that is a lump. Oh, ben, I can't move it. Uh, where the dog is?
before it come off then. Swim. <laughs> Good old walk down. Bo's probably still in the bivvy because the door's down. I'm not sure what to say because I'm a bit speechless. But that is one seriously big carp. Definitely a UK fever hit. Awesome. Oh. There you go, there's the rig. Just a very simple line of line of rig. It's all got pocket in it. Cheers, Lee. Well, helmet <laughs> and your pants. <laughs> <laughs> cheers, cheers.